Hey, hi. hi. I can see. Hi. This is unbelievable. 770 with a verbal 47, despite the fact that he was struggling so badly in the verbal section. So I... just, just let take us through your journey. We came to know through your LinkedIn that you're from Symbiosis. And one of your seniors with us, Kritika, who is also a LinkedIn contact, uh, she scored a 770 a few months earlier as well. And her score in verbal was also 47. And that was just phenomenal. So take us through, you know, exactly how you prepared. I know through the emails that you definitely had been facing some challenges with verbal. And I'm really sorry for some of the scoldings that happened in the emails. But uh, yeah, take us through your prep, please. Sure. So I begin by talking about coin. So being someone who left math at, you know, barely in 10th grade, I could handle math. So being someone who was so bad at math, quant would literally scare me a lot of times. And, you know, before joining TOP, I was referring to a few online resources, like for about a month or two, mm -hmm. but it wasn't working for me at all. I think I took the approach really, you know, in a wrong way. And I started memorizing questions or, you know, treating mm -hmm. each questions the way they come and not trying to find out where am I going wrong or what kind mm -hmm. of, you know, mistakes we are doing. Because as we know, there's always a pattern. You tend to miss certain things. You're good at other things. So you need to really, you know, analyze your error log. And so that was something that was missing. And, you know, I was taking the long algebraic way in everything. And I wasn't even, uh, I wasn't able to solve the questions within two minutes. Also, font was pretty bad for me at that point of time. Right. But after I joined top, so after about a class or two, I, you know, I joined live classes because I really wanted to uh, understand what kind of a um, thought process we use while solving questions. So because, you know, formula is, I think, not even 10% of your GMAT journey. It won't take you anywhere if, if right. you don't develop that kind of a thought process. You know, right. how you're going to approach a particular question or uh, which way are you going to think or like Sir points right. out every time you need to consider all exceptional cases and data sufficiency. So... Uh, I would say in the initial classes, all you have to focus is whatever pre-work he's giving you, hmm. because every question that he gives you has a purpose behind it to develop your thought process. I mean, the videos that you are required to see hmm. as a part of your pre-work. It's absolutely essential. And I would, you know, basically advise you every two weeks, you need to go back to that material and refer, you know, refresh those um, thoughts and refresh the way that you have to solve sums in your mind so that uh, you're, so that, you know, you're not cramming things up or you're not mugging up formula because trust me, that's not going to take you anywhere in your GMAT prep. Because there's about a million questions, you could solve a million questions and still that pattern won't come to you unless, you know, you develop that kind of a process in your head. I'm very glad, Shloka, you say this because this is what I've been harping on that develop the thought process rather than solve lots of questions mindlessly. And you've been saying the same thing and really, really something that echoes my own sentiment as well. What were the most difficult topics for you in Quant uh, in terms of concepts or in terms of developing that thought process? Like which ones mm -hmm. troubled you the most? Also, tell me about your verbal prep now and then I'll talk about the exam experience. Right. Sure. As Sir said, verbal was weaker than quant for me. I had a million doubts. I would write to them like almost every day that, oh my God, I'm not able to understand this or how do we do that? And you know, at times, even about the most basic stuff, basic concepts, or if I'm not able to understand, uh, like you might have seen the SC PDF, mm, and right. if I'm not able to understand a particular example, because what I wanted to do since the very beginning was to get the basics right. Mm. It's not that you're going to face the same questions on the exam. Trust me, there are no repeats on the exam at all. Right. So what you need to really, you know, think about is how am I going to apply this particular thing if, if I face it on the exam day? And trust me, with the kind of pressure on the exam day, at times you have to rely on your subconscious. When you have imbibed all the, you know, formulae and all the thought process in your subconscious, that's what, you know, is helpful on the exam day. Because Absolutely. at times you get stressed. Right. So tell me, let's say each area, uh, RC, CR, SC, which one was the most difficult? How did you conquer it? And uh, what was the way forward for you? What material did you refer to? And eventually did you use a portal and so on? Just give me some basic idea about each of the areas in detail. Yeah. All right. So I would start by talking about RC. So RC, I started by, you know, applying Octave con very consciously to almost about 
uh, 60 to 70 passages untimed. Mm -hmm. At first, I had my reservations about whether, you know, I was applying it in the uh, right way or, you know, mm -hmm. if I was tending to make mistakes in the tone of the passage. Because before attending some deep source classes, trust me, I didn't even know what tone meant. I could, mm -hmm. I could never think of, you know, analyzing it from the passage, whether the mm -hmm. author was disinterested or whether he was neutral. Mm -hmm. So that was something that really helped me. But after about, I, I started analyzing after about 70 passages from the class sessions PDF, I uh, jumped right on to uh, the 700, 800 level PDF. And, you know, right from the first passage of that PDF, Octave came very naturally to me because I think I consciously applied it to like first 50 passages or something. So I didn't have to, you know, pressurize my brain into thinking that, oh my God, what is the tone of the passage or something like that. It became natural after 50, right. that is. Right. About, it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It went without saying, like, you know, I would spot some words or, or, you know, I didn't even have to pressurize my brain into thinking, like, what is the tone or where are the contradiction words to find out primary purpose. So it was all into me now and all I had to do was practice and retain it. So yeah. I don't think RC troubled me that much. And even when I was done with the 700, 800 level uh, questions, I was kind of bad at uh, long passages. So I started doing LSAT uh, papers. Like I think we have about a 50 of them right, right. Uh, in our prep uh, material. So that really helped me with uh, the long passages because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was tending to take a lot of time on them. But mm -hmm. LSAT, doing LSAT, it really trained me for long passages, which I really faced on my exam day, pretty long passages. Right. And how about critical reasoning? Because that was a bit of a concern area for you. You could get stuck in two options and really debate over and over, as we saw in some of the emails as well. So how was that for you? Please tell. And yeah. Critical reasoning really troubled me a lot. I was not able, you know, until the last moment, critical reasoning was something was something that would scare me a lot, especially assumption and weaken questions. Because, you know, the uh, at times, uh, the question is so subtle, you know, you have to really point out that link between the premise and conclusion. And at times, it's so subtle, you wouldn't realize you miss it. Mm -hmm. So you have to really develop that eye, you know, you know, for spotting, okay, where's the premise or where's the author trying to make a con uh, make an assumption? Because once and one, one thing that I found was, once I started, you know, doing well on assumption questions, all the weaken and strengthen also became easy because once you do the assumption questions, you will be able to spot the premise. Uh, that is and, the centrality yeah. of the entire critical right. reasoning, as I say again and again. And uh, which content did you refer to? Was it topic wise more or was it 700, 800 more like eventually? So I started with uh, topic wise uh, PDF first, hmm. but as I said, midway, I was facing a lot of difficulty with assumption questions. And naturally, if I face difficulty hmm. with assumption, I would face it with others too. Mm -hmm. So I contacted, you know, the top team and the deep search and deep search told me, don't worry, it's a tiny bump in the road. You'll be able to do it eventually. And hmm. then eventually some deep search told me to refer to LSAT content for, hmm. um, um, for CR uh, questions, mm -hmm. because uh, in one in each uh, SR paper, there are like two uh, two sections with a mm -hmm. lot of CR questions. So, and when you do LSAT, trust me, it'll change the way you look at um, assumption mm -hmm. questions because they because more than GMAT, LSAT questions are very subtle. You have mm -hmm. to really uh, spot where the author is, you know, making a mistake, a number percentage flaw. It's not very general as compared to GMAT and it'll really prepare you for 700, 800 level questions. Right, right. right. So you did more, more relied on the LSAT content in both RC and CR eventually to finesse it to that level. Right. And obviously, and sentence correction, I don't know where to start because we used to really have almost fights in the email sometimes that you know and not that why aren't you getting it that this is something that has been discussed and maybe some things were not registering which is a very natural thing this is not that it happened only with you this happens a lot because when a student is trying to get everything right there is the slightest flaw or the doubt in their approach and they'll sometimes get stuck so i think it happened uh, sometimes so just tell us about the sc journey as well all right, so SC journey started on a pretty good note for me. Mm -hmm. Like when I started uh, doing the 100 most important questions, I was getting good accuracy, like about 70 to 75 percent were right. Mm -hmm. And then I started after the class, I started working on um, the 700, 800 PDF, which mm -hmm. was going fine. And uh, until I, I think there are three parts in that mm -hmm. um, PDF. 
and it was going uh, quite well until the second part when I started making even silly errors. I think that was the point of time when my exam was getting close. And I really think I panicked at that point of time and I wrote emails about even the most basic stuff. I think you guys can solve it very easily, whatever doubts I had. And Sandeep sir asked me to, you know, calm myself down that I was making mistakes and errors in like the most basic of questions. So I think keeping your calm in SC and trying to really, you know, grasp uh, the checking meaning clarity everywhere because on the exam day, let me tell you, all my SC questions had meaning clarity issues. They were very subtle. You had to really, Obviously, you, know, you scored 47. Out. So that goes without saying. We say that every question that is above 700 is a guaranteed meaning clarity question. And that's what happened with you as well. So you did improve eventually when you calmed yourself down. I mean, the content was there. The rules are right. there. Everything is there. Right. Tell us about the exam experience. Did you face anything unusual on the exam day in content verbal? Like, was there any question that you felt like this is unseen by me? Your verbal doesn't show that because it's a phenomenally high score, but still I would like to hear from you. Was there anything unusual? Sure. So starting with quant, I, I didn't see any unusual questions on that day. My quant score is a, a little on the lower side, uh, you know, in my opinion, because I think, uh, you know, I'm in, I have a habit of doing a lot of writing in quant because my brain can't just function, you know, without writing. So when I reached over there, I was having a lot of issues with the scratch pad that they give. So mm -hmm. it took me a lot of time to adapt to that way of writing, you know, with the mm -hmm. markers and stuff, because we are used to writing with pens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's where I spent a lot of time in the first 10 questions and even, you know, trying to solve and adapt. And once I did, I was running out of time. Mm -hmm. So I had to really pace my quant up. And I think that's where it went wrong. But it wasn't anything unusual. It's all the general questions that you solve in the class. And class PDFs are absolutely important because, you know, there are a lot of exceptions in that question. And you would really understand, like, you know, the places where you could go wrong on the exam day. That's great to know. And uh, apart from that, uh, in uh, verbal, were there any surprises? Though, verbal, though it is were... unlikely, but still, I'm just asking. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Verbal, there were no surprises at all. The RC passages were pretty long. Even for a short passage, it was long. But, you know, it was uh, vocabulary wise or even, uh, you know, other things in the passage. It wasn't that tough. But mm -hmm. yes, you you will face a lot of inference questions. You really have to, you know, spot it. I would always remember this thing by Sandeep. Sir, if you can put your finger on it, you can verify it. That's the right answer. That's what I did in RC. Right. Like honestly. Okay, could you just sum up the contents you would have studied then the mocks and uh, all the okay. other things so that we just have an idea about, you know, it took you what amount of content to get that level of confidence eventually and were you confident before the exam as well? Like so. that too. So about the mocks, I purchased a, I purchased a exam pack five and six, and I also gave the default uh, mocks. So all in all, I gave four official mocks. And from Sandeep Sir's portal, I think I gave about 17 to 18 full length tests. They are very helpful. They really train you for the worst on your exam day. And I They're very say, demotivating also, I've heard from people. Right. Are they really? Yeah, they, you wouldn't have a stellar performance there, trust me. And if you do, you're a genius, but you would, I didn't have a stellar performance there. But, you know, you cannot, you know, hold on to your mistakes. You need to think that, think it that way. Okay, I made this mistake. Now I really need to think about it. Think about mm -hmm. the question this way. And I even had a word with Soumya ma'am once that I'm making a lot of mistakes. I'm way beyond the target. Is it the right time to take the exam? Because, you know, all the application deadlines were really close. And I was really worried at that point of time. And Soumya ma'am told me it's fine. You need to, you know, maintain an error log, maintain a journal so that you don't keep on repeating the same errors. That's really, really nice to know. So, and when did you feel you were ready? Like, did you feel that or you felt that, let me just now go, I'm, I'm done and I'm enough, enough of all this. No, if... I never felt ready. I had to like book, it, book an exam in the pressure, like, oh my God, deadlines are closed. I have to give it a shot. And and even like a day before the exam, I was like, I, I should go on practicing because I didn't feel ready at all. Mm -hmm. Because I looked at my performance on the portal. Like uh, if you look at your official performance, our official mock performance and your performance on the portal, there's a lot of difference in that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't consider my mock scores to be legitimate, like the official mm -hmm. mock scores, because uh, there were when you do a lot repeats. of practice, you're bound to get repeats. Right, right. 
and you're not really sure if your brain would function the same way on the exam day so i understand the will absolutely right 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 so, and even and, the sectional tests are yeah. very uh, very useful i gave i exhausted almost every quant sectional test that i could get on the portal and even mm -hmm. the verbal sectional tests are pretty useful thank you shloka and really really wonderful talking to you great performance you and uh, being from the live classes and you're addressing a live batch really really gives everyone else motivation as well and uh, the bigger part is that you know everyone joining us is not a genius in the beginning please remember that that's what we feel when we see 777 80 every week coming we just feel these people are special or something like that that's our objective in you know bringing people who are struggling and who when when they were on the other side when they had not written the exam they would have really struggled as well or as badly as most of us do all right thanks and uh, all the best for your applications work please consult my teammate Autry. he will guide you further for I that did, sir. I did. right thank all right you, thank you bye bye bye